Well, welcome back to another episode of Who the F***. In today's episode, we're looking at King Stingray, an amazing, amazing band from the Northern Territories. I've definitely never made a video like this before. I'm really excited to go into it. If you've never heard of them before, hopefully this video will help answer the question, Who the F***, King Stingray? Your ringer, Roy Dimitaya, Campbell, Lewis are the five members that make up King Stingray. There's also Yimler on Wikipedia, and when I saw them, they definitely had six people. I just can't seem to find a photo of him. NME described them as a fuse of desert rock, saltwater reggae, and other influences to create their unique Yolamu surf rock sound. Roy and Yoranga have known each other since childhood. They're from Arnhem Land, a historical region of the Northern Territories of Australia, of which 75% of its population is made up of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. And I think this has had a profound impact on their music. To quote the boys themselves, they describe themselves as young fellows from the bush. They're both related to founding members of Yothu Yindi, a merger of two bands set up in 1986, featuring both Ballander and Aboriginal members. Three, yeah. Enemy writes, it's clear that watching from the sidelines as youngsters and getting to play with the Yothu Yindi project in 2017 have seeped into Yoranga and Roy's consciousness more than they know. King Stingray has parallels to Yothu Yindi's debut, Homeland Movement, which was also written around Minakai, an ancestral song tradition. As a band, they only formed relatively recently at the 2019 Byron Blues Festival, releasing their debut single, Hey Wanak, in October 2020. Hey, hey, hey. The record was released on Bargain Bin Records, an independent record label owned by Sunny Coast legends and music club favourites, The Chats. Eamon Sandwith, the frontman of The Chats, said, I'm bloody stoked to have King Stingray on the Bargain Bin train. I'm very much looking forward to seeing them grow as a band, and I can't wait to hit the road and do some shows together. They went on to release their follow-up record, Get Me Out, in January 2021. A record described by Dan Condon of Double J as a tribute to the importance of home. In August 2021, they followed up with the banger that is Milku Mana. <laughs> Declan Byrne of Triple J's Home and Hose praised Milk and Manor in his five star review saying, King Stingray are one of the best live bands I've seen this year and Milk and Manor captures the energy, spirit and totally infectious feeling I've been reliving ever since seeing them on stage. In November 2021, they won the Triple J Unearthed Artist of the Year, beating runners up Teenage Jones, Hope D, Blank and 1300. Check out my WTF short about them from this week. In the run up to the release of their album, they put out two singles, Camp Dog and the outstanding Let's Go. promo for the album, they would record a session for Triple J's Like A Version, covering Coldplay's iconic Yellow. It just takes all of the brilliance of that initial record by Coldplay and adds the most magical Aboriginal influences. And the use of the clapsticks, or the, the Bilma, just, it adds such an amazing new level to it. In August 2022, they released their eponymously titled record to the world, scoring 90 on Album of the Year. In the Guardian's review, they said, regardless of the family connections, the one thing that King Stingray doesn't sound like is a throwback. This is not a revival act. Everything here sounds contemporary by a band living their own dream, radiating with happiness and infectious enthusiasm. It's happening. NME gave the record five stars out of five, citing, the album's sonic palette is diverse, anchored in soaring and soulful surf rock with fiery hooks and ultra catchy choruses. And featured all previous singles, as well as live standouts, Rapiri, Life Goes On, and their final single, Looper. <laughs> Earlier this year, they went on an Australian headline tour. I was fortunate enough to catch them play their Brisbane leg at the Triffid. God, what a show. And to wrap it up, they've done two covers this year, one of Men at Works Down Under, and I've just done an amazing cover, Red Run Run Rudolph, just in time for Christmas. I come from the land down under. 
You know, since moving back to Australia, I've spent a lot of time trying to understand the huge cultural differences between the First Nations people of this country and the colonizers. I use that term very loosely. And there's lots of hatred still to this day. And I think King Stingray for me, they represent people that are trying to make it work. I think their music is fucking awesome. Going and seeing them live is brilliant. Like this fuse of alt rock or garage rock or surf rock as they call it and traditional Aboriginal or First Nations instruments like didgeridoos and, and bilma, the clapsticks. It's amazing, it's so cool. And Lauren is like the biggest fan. So she's kind of been playing them a lot around the house and I've just come to just really love them. And I think episodes like this remind me why I make videos like this because it gets me to a place where I can really appreciate the music on a, a level that I never would have done if I was just listening. I just think it's great that they're putting where they're from on the map and also keeping that language alive. There's, there's so many great things that come with King Stingray. I think they're just absolutely brilliant. Good group of lads making some epic music. If you ever get the chance to see them live, absolutely do, they're so cool. So, what do you think? Are you gonna go see King Stingray live at Spilt Milk? Have you seen them perform before? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.